message this morning is very important. If you want to take notes, it's going to help you. Stay where you are. Stay where I ask you to stay. Can we all say it together? Can you say it louder? Stay on top of your voice. Say it as if you mean it. Yeah, stay where I ask you to stay. Many of us don't want to stay where God wants us to stay. Because we have our mind and we have our agenda. And we feel we can do it all. And we feel we can fix it and we can help ourselves. And when God tells you to stay somewhere, come on now. When God tells you to stay somewhere, it means it's taking you somewhere. You know, sometimes a delay is not a denier. God wants you to wait. And God wants to bring some people to meet you where he asks you to stay. God wants people to notice you where you stay. God wants to use the people to announce, announce you where you stay. So when God asks you to stay somewhere, it means he want to take you somewhere big. And I want to tell you, in the means of God telling you to stay, you're going to encounter obstacles. You're going to come again, you're going to come across discouragement. You're going to lose your mind too. People are going to laugh at you. You're going to lose some money too. You're going to look at yourself as if you're crazy. But God says, stay where I ask you to stay. Because I want to use that place to announce you. Tell your neighbor again, stay where I ask you to stay. Say it with boldness. Say, stay where I ask you to stay. Now this comes to mind in in the book of Ruth. When you read the book of Ruth, the Bible say, Naomi, Naomi, Naomi got married. She lost her husband. And she has two sons, and her two sons died. And she has two daughter-in-law, Oprah and Ruth. And he called these young ladies together. I'm just giving the story, then you can understand where, where I'm going. And, and he told these young, beautiful women, he said, you know what? I have lost my husband. I lost my two sons. I have nothing in life again. My life is gone. My life is miserable. I I, I don't have nothing. I don't have anything again. I'm done. I am done. So you ladies, since you have no child, go back home to your parent and go remarried. And Ruth look at a mother-in-law. He said, I'm not going nowhere. Uh, Wherever you lay, I will lay. Your people will be my people. What you eat, I will eat. Whatever you ask me to do, I will do. Now I begin to ask myself, I think Ruth doesn't have a home. Because if she has a home, she's going to go home. Maybe she has nothing. All she has also is gone. All she has is a husband. And she has nobody to fall back at again. All she has and all she knows is a mother-in-law. So he said, you know what? I ain't going back home. I'm happy because I know you. Because I have nowhere to go to. The mother-in-law insisted, go home. Look, Oprah. Bye. What are you waiting for? She waits. She stay. With her mother-in-law. And when her mother-in-law passed away. And she refused. The mother-in-law now want to show her the secret. How to liberate her. Come on now. <laughs> Somebody's not getting what I'm saying. Now, 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 listen, listen. When you stay with God. No matter what comes your way. You will break through. Amen. But you must be determined. To connect. Is a choice. You must what? Be determined to connect. 
Don't let nobody bring you down and don't bring yourself down. Don't let your family member, your friend, and the place of your job and what you love so much to bring you down. You got to connect with him with the whole of your heart. So the mother-in-law now wants to show her secret. When you stay where God asks you to stay, it's going to open your eyes to mystery. The Bible said, They that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So God wants to open you up to big things. But you must stay where he asks you to stay. Sometimes when God asks you to stay somewhere, the place may, uh, may be quiet and look miserable and look dirty. But God says, stay there. Because I'm about to use the foolish thing to confirm the wise. So when God asks you to stay somewhere, you got to stay. You better stay. Amen? Amen. Now, look, listen to what happened in, in, uh, in, in, in Act, I mean, Ruth chapter 2, verse 9. Ruth chapter 2, verse 9. The Bible say, And Naomi tell Ruth, put your eyes on the field. Meradushka, that's where I'm going. Put your eyes on the field. Can you all say it together with me? Say it louder. Now listen to this. The people on the field, we noticed you. And the people of the field will announce you. Somebody's not getting me. Put your eyes on the field. The people on the field will notice you. And the people of the field will announce you. When you stay where God asks you to stay. Then people will begin to see the manifestation and the glory of God upon your life. You don't have to tell them who you are. The modern analyst says, stay on the field. The people of the field, we notice to you. And the people of the field, we announce you. When you read further, I didn't put all the scripture. When you read further, because we don't have time. When you read further, the Bible says, the people on the field begin to ask questions. Who is that girl? Who is that girl? Where does she come from? Who is that girl? They don't talk to her, but they gossip about her. You know, some people don't talk to you, but they know everything. About, everybody knows everything about you. Huh? When you walk, they say, who is she? Oh, look the way she dressed today. You can know they're talking about you, but none of them have ever come to you and tell you that they're talking about you. Uh, you know, very soon the message is going to get to the boss. And the name of the boss is Boas. <laughs> His name is boss. And very soon, the message gets to the boss. He say, there is one girl that we are seeing on this field picking green with us. None of us have talked to her, but we notice her. Now the boss say, who is she? And the boss now remember, oh, she's the daughter-in-law of Naomi. She has done too good. Suddenly, she was announced. You know the end of the story? She became the wife of the boss. I say to you this morning, stay on the field. The field will notice you. The people will notice you. And the people will announce. No, no, look at it. She stay where the mother-in-law asked her to stay. Put your eyes on the field because something extraordinary is about to happen in your life. You can see it, but I can see it. The Bible says, you know the hand before the beginning. He ended up marrying. He didn't introduce herself to the boss. The people saw her because she was where the mother-in-law told her to stay. Ooh. 
Things may look silent right now for you. Things may look empty for you right now. You may be confused in your life. You may be confused with your family. Your relationship may not be working. You may be saying, God, but I'm serving you. Why everything silent? Keep holding on. Keep holding on. Come on. Keep holding on. Keep holding on. Come on. Don't give up. Don't let nobody bring you down. God has a promise for you and the promise of God concerning your life, your destiny. We come to pass. Keep holding on. Stay on the field. The people on the field will notice you. And the people of the field we announce you. And very soon the people that notice you and announce you they will soon serve you. Somebody's not getting it. The same people that talk about you, that pass the message across for you, that become your newspaper and your Instagram and your Facebook and your Twitter. Amen, amen, amen. Very soon, very, very soon, there'll be the same people that will serve you a cup of tea. Somebody's not getting what I'm saying. There will be the same people that would what? Serve you a cup of tea. Joshua chapter 1 verse 9. I, I love this. He said, Remember I command you, be strong and brave. Tell your neighbor, brave. Tell your neighbor, brave. Now, now, why, why is God telling Joshua, be strong and brave? Just imagine all the people that talk to Ruth. Oh, look that lady. Look who she, who she is. Who do you think you are? We, yeah, huh? Hey, if you are not strong and you are not brave, the trauma of life will sweep you off your feet before you know it. You are not crazy, but you'll be thinking as if you're crazy. There is nothing wrong with you, but you are crying. And they say, why are you crying? I don't know where I'm crying. It's like everything is falling apart for me. But the Bible says, I should tell you this morning, be strong and be brave. Because I am the Lord your God. There is nothing that is impossible with me. If I said it, it will come to pass. He said, be brave, be strong. It means you're going to carry some heavy load that is bigger than you. Things that you cannot lift. Things that we make all. He said, be brave. Things are going to fall apart. Be brave. People are going to spit at you. Be brave. People are going to bring you down. Be brave. You're going to lose things valuable to you. Be brave. People are going to reject you. Come on. Be brave. Say be strong and be brave. I say don't be afraid because the Lord your God is with the Lord your God is with you. The Lord your God is with you. He that watches over me does not sleep nor slumber. The Lord your God is with you. So when you want to take some weight that is bigger than you the way that is going to overwhelm your mind. You're going to tell the Lord, I am strong in the Lord. I am not afraid of the terror that fly by day or the arrow that move by night. The Lord is my strength and my salvation. Whom shall I be afraid of? If the Lord is with me, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Then you can lift up the weight and say I'm lifting up the weight and I'm carrying the weight because I am victorious in the name of Jesus. I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus. No power of darkness will stop your family, will stop your children. Every power that has been tormenting your mind, I rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus. You are coming out of every evil power that I've tied you down. No, no. Listen. 
listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. There is something God wants to do. That is why all this discouragement is coming. God wants to do what money cannot buy. Because money can buy kidney. And money can buy love. Money can buy joy. Money can buy happiness. Money can buy you. What is money can buy you? Money can buy you a baby. Oh, I want to give to you what money can give to you. But you must stay where I ask you to stay is a command. Tell your neighbor is a command. When, when, when the soldier go, a battalion of soldier, if, you, if you've been into military school before, the commander, the captain will say, ah, stay here. Everybody got to stay. You, you must not move. If you move, you're in trouble. When they say stay, stay. When they say move, you move. When the Lord says stay, you got to stay. And that is why he said in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, Deuteronomy chapter 28, he said, if you fully obey the voice of the Lord, if you fully obey the commandment, if you fully obey the voice and the commandment, <laughs> somebody's not going to say, if you fully, so if he asks you to stay, Come on now. If you ask you to stay, it means he has something in mind for you. God cannot ask you to stay somewhere without having something in mind. You can go to Florida. If God asks you to stay in Massachusetts, you're coming back to Massachusetts. You can go to Houston, Texas. If the Lord asks you to stay in Massachusetts, you don't have a choice, you're coming back. You can't even go to Japan and say, oh Lord, I don't like New Bedford. I'm tired of New Bedford. There is nothing good in New Bedford. He said, I am moving up to Japan. And God said, there's nothing waiting for you in Japan. You got to go back to New Bedford. If God says stay, it means there is something Good for you. Now he said, and if you fully obey the voice of the Lord and be careful to do all his commandment that he has command you today, the Lord God will set you above all nations of the earth. Tell your neighbor, I am not ordinary. I am extraordinary. That's why I'm going through what I'm going through. Because I am not normal. I am abnormal. If I am normal, if I am normal, people will treat me normal. But because I am abnormal, people treat me abnormal. Come on, clap your hands for Jesus. Because if you are normal, people will treat you. Okay, it's fine. Bye. But when they say this is normal, they will treat you with extra care. And God said, I want to do extra care with you. But you got to wait. Because what I want to do in you is not ordinary. I have to take hold you off and put new you. I have to take something off you. Because some things, it's not you that bring it upon your life. Come on, brother. Do you know what your grand great father did? He came to your grandfather. And now he came to your father. That is your father's family, right? Do you know what your great grandmother did? Your family side. He came to your grandmother, then great-grandmother, and to your mother. Now your mother and your father meet together. Your father is carrying his own trouble from wherever he comes from. And your mother is also carrying his own trouble wherever she came from. And both of them came together and they produce you. So you have the problem of your father and the problem of your mother. You are carrying it. Now when you come to God... He go to the root. 
of what happened to your father and go to the root of what happened to your mother and uproot them and reannounce you so that something extraordinary, something supernatural must happen in your life. When, oh, come on, come on, somebody's not getting what I'm telling you this morning. Now listen to me. When you cut a tree from the top and you did not go to the root, the three we grow again. You let me tell you, my, I asked my wife some few weeks ago on our street. A man is digging the ground. There's no tree planted. He was just digging the ground. And my wife, I don't know what happened. She packed Aka. Why are you digging a ground? They said there is a tree that keep growing. We got to get to the root. If we don't get to the root, the tree will grow again from the stem of the root. So we want to get rid of every root so that this tree will not grow again. I prophesy to you today everything from your root that is growing again against your life, against your mind. God is digging is digging, is digging from the root and taking every stem out. That's why some people, you keep doing the same thing and ask, something is wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with you because you have not dealt with the root. And you can't deal with the root quiet. You must deal with the root. Digging. You must go to digging. My wife asked the question, she said, why do they want to dig and take it off? He said, there is a bee that always come on this tree. And you know what bee does? When bees think you, you got to go to the hospital. He said, because we don't want to see this bee. Every time the tree grow, the bee come on the tree. This is in Dartmouth. This is not in Africa. Because if in Africa, there was a voodoo magic. Now, this is in America. It's every time the tree grow, the bee come on the tree. So we want to get rid of the roots so the bee will not come back. You are not understanding things of the spirit. When God says stay somewhere, there is something is stripping off your life. There is something is taking care in your life that you can't see with your ordinary eyes. But the devil doesn't want you to come to God because he's the only one that can dig you off. The root. The devil doesn't want us to be patient. You want us to run after everything. When God said, be still, I want to surprise you. I want to change your story. I want to change your life. I say, if you fully obey, you say, I'm going to bless you. There's something to say. Look, look, look what they say. I love this. I love this. Three, three, 28, three. Didn't tell 28, three. Blessed shall you be in the city. Now, he said, and blessed shall you be in what? Put your eyes on. Come on, clap your hands. Put your eyes on the field. The field will notice you, and the field will announce you. <laughs> when God sends you somewhere and He has you to stay, it's because. He want to bless you. Tell your neighbor because he want to bless you. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5. We all know the scripture. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5. But there's something that struck my mind. Trust the Lord with all your heart. And I love this. It's, and do not lean on your understanding. That's all. You do not do what? Lean on your. Because all your understanding will keep telling you. You can fix it. Just get three jobs, you will pay the bill. Huh? Just get three jobs. You know what? You don't need anything. Get three jobs. The bill will be paid. You know what I'm saying? 
You know, it's going to, your understanding will tell you, you know what, go to school, get a school on. After school, you get a good job. The school you didn't finish, the school loan is waiting because you trust in your understanding. Mm. Then you get the job. You don't know that the people in the job have been there before you, right? And you want to show them you know better than them. You're about to lose the job. Say, lean not on your own understanding. Oh, you get a job. And the people of the job show you. And now they will tell you they have become your enemy. They want to tell you that they know better than you. Because you are leaning on your what? He said, lean not on your own understanding. In all your way, acknowledge God. So everything that gets your hand is not your effort. It's God that places it in your hand. If you wake up in the morning, it's because you are perfect or you're string. It's God that wake you up in the morning. If you drive that car from here to heaven, it's not because you know how to drive better than other people that have accident. It's the Lord. <laughs> That's what over you. You know, sometimes if you take your medication and it's working for you, some people take the same medication and they find themselves in the hospital. It's the Lord that is watching over you. I want to tell you today in the name of Jesus, when you can trust the Lord with all your heart, all his promises concerning Shining your life and your children will come to pass. The devil, the enemy doesn't want us to trust the Lord. But I have a good news for you. If you can trust him. Sandra, I'm so proud of you. Sandra, let me share our testimony. Sandra always said to me, Pastor, when is my sister going to come to church? When, Pastor, I just want my sister to come to church. Every time you ask me, I say, Sandra, just keep trusting the Lord. Your sister will come to church. That is Sandra's sister in the church. <laughs> One day she just wake up and say, Sandra, we're going to that church today. And she never stop. <laughs> she just wake up and say, today, we're going. Because Sandra keep trusting the Lord for her sister. She keep praying for her. Do you know how many times she prayed for you? She keep you, your sister love you so much. She keep praying and praying and one day she said, you know what, Sandra, I guess probably she didn't even invite her that day. She said, you know, Sandra, you know that church you've been talking about all these days? Let's go. <laughs> he said, trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. He said, in on your way and acknowledge him and he shall direct your past. Now the enemy will try everything for us not to trust the Lord. But I'm telling you this morning, if you can stay where God has positioned you and you did not turn back, I'm going to tell you a good news. This morning, God will use that situation, that circumstances to announce you to the place of glory. He will use that circumstances to announce you to the name of it doesn't matter how many times you fall. Come on, stand up. No, no, I didn't say stand up. It doesn't matter how many times you fall. I've seen a little boy trying to crawl. Been trying to stand up. The moment they take one step and fall, they will stand again. Look at yourself. It doesn't matter how many times you fall. Stand up. You know what has stopped you in your life? You have listened to what everybody got to say about you. You walk with what they say and what they feed you. But you don't know what God is saying about you. Because the more you listen to what people say about you, you are living the life of the people, not the life God wants you to live. And that has, um, that has messed with your mind. It has messed with your life. You've been in the same place for a long time because that is not who you are. You are living the life of others. But I want to tell you today, this morning, God is taking that fear of your life. From now, you're going to be living the life that God has given to you from your mother's womb. 
live the life of others, live the life of God for your life. I'm rounding up. My last scripture, proverb of Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Ooh. What are you desperate for? I've seen a lot of people desperation. What are you desperate for? Because a man leave you and say he doesn't love you again, you don't look good. And the whole universe is waiting for you. Somebody's not getting what I'm saying. Because somebody say, I don't want you again. And you're crying. He's not dead. He's not dead. He's in Boston enjoying himself in, in Marriott. And you're here crying. And God has something big for you. You know why he left you? Because you have not trust God. So he has to leave you for you to trust God. Because if you don't leave you, you won't trust God and you won't know the promise of God for your life. And you won't walk in the purpose of God because that man has become God in your life. So God has to take him off for him to prove that he's more than him. Somebody's not getting what I'm saying. Somebody's not clapping. You're not clapping your hands for this. You're not getting, you're not getting it. You're not getting it. You don't know God is shaping you for something big because somebody left you what, what are you answering? Let them go. Some people got to go. If some people don't leave you, you won't get to where you're going. Some people got to leave you. If you, <laughs> come on now. If you refuse them to leave you, you're going to remain where you are. But some people have to go for where you are now. And some people can't stand you too. You need some people that can't stand you. I need some people that can't stand me. Because if everybody can stand you, you are not ready for miracle yet. <laughs> Somebody's like, get a view. You got to pray for your enemies. You need more enemy. The more enemy you got, Pastor said, what are, the more enemy you got, the more blessing that is coming your way. And that is why you're going to watch out. That's why you're going to pray more. That's why you're going to trust God more. Because you have trust people. You got to trust God now. That's why I will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemy. So if you don't have an enemy, there's no table that God will prepare before. Somebody get what I'm saying now? Are you getting me? He said, do not be anxious for nothing. But with supplication and thanksgiving, make your request. What is he saying? In every situation, you got to thank God. In good, you got to praise him. In bad, you got to praise him. When you have some money to pay your bill, you got to praise him. When you don't have enough money to pay your bill, you got to give him praise. When you are losing your mind, you got to give him praise. When I think of the goodness of the Lord and all that he has done for me, my very soul shout hallelujah. Praise God for saving me. Praise God for taking me out of the merry clay and place my feet on a solid rock. Praise God for wiping away my tears and putting a smile on my face. Praise God for preparing the table before me in the presence of my hand. Come on. Praise God for seven men. Praise God for seven men. When you begin to praise Him, you begin to see His hand at work in your life. Come on, praise Him. Come on, praise Him. Come on, give Him praise. Come on, celebrate Him. He's a King of Kings. He's a Lord of Lords. He's the I am that I am. He's the ancient of. Come on, praise Him. When I think of the goodness of the Lord and all. Do you know how many people has laughed at you, behind you, and the smile in your presence? 
and God still save you. Do you know how many people pray every day to see you cry? And you're still smiling. Praise God for saving me. Do you know how many people that mess around with you behind you? And God is still giving you strength to push on when you're about to give up. Come on, you got to praise him for saving you. When you come to him and you can praise him. When I think of the goodness of the Lord and all, all that he has done for me, I'm going to praise him. He said, when you come to him, don't be anxious. Because before you ask, he has answered. He said, knock, the door shall be open." He said, can your son, my son can ask me for bread. My son, my little two years old, if he asks me for bread and I give him a stone, he will ask me, Daddy, do you want me to stone you? He said, this is not bread. I ask you for bread, not for stone. The Bible says, if your son can ask you for bread and you can give him bread, how much more your heavenly father that owns the heaven and the earth. He said, whatsoever you ask me, I will give so be anxious for say with prayer and supplication make your request is what make your request make unto the Lord it's a request Lord this is what I want and I'm thanking you because you can do it I, 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 I thank you because you can wipe away my tears I thank you because you can save my family. I thank you you are healing me from that back pain. I thank you, Lord. I'm tired of going to the doctors. But I thank you because right now you're touching me. He said, don't be anxious for nothing with thanksgiving. Make your request. Make unto the Lord. I round up with this. Stay where he asks you to stay and it's gonna bless you many of us don't know how to stay where he asked us to stay because sometimes where God asks you to stay may look messed up but he wants you to stay there it may look small but he wants you to stay there it may look discouraging but he wants you to stay there. There is something God is doing that you can see with your ordinary eye. And that is why he's an invisible God. We can see him, but he knows us by your name, by our name. Come on, lift up your hand and stand up and just lift up your hands to God. And give this invisible God praise. Just give him glory. Glory.